If you're interested in buying Fallout 76 caps, weapons or items, check out EasyNPC.com and use my code DTDG for 5% off via the link in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video on the channel. In literally like two days now, we are getting the new Steel Rain update. And in this video, I'm going to go over 11 changes, although I've titled it 10, um, that are coming in, which are massive changes, very like cool stuff to look forward to. And I'm going to be covering all of it in this video. So stay tuned. If you enjoy, make sure to hit that like button. And of course, if you're new around here and want to keep up to date with everything Fallout 76, whether it's news, camp builds, whatever it is, make sure to subscribe. Now let's jump straight into today's video. So coming in with Steel Rain, one of the awesome new things is the new weapon called the Pepper Shaker. Now, unfortunately, I don't think this is actually going to be straight in the game and we are going to have to wait for Meat Week, but it is quite a fun weapon, as you can see, to use. It's not as fantastic as we thought it was going to be, though, because they are taking away the explosive effect, which I currently have running on this character, which you can see when I shoot and stuff, you know. But yeah, so this awesome explosive effect will be no more once the update finally comes out because they realise it would be too overpowered. Obviously this is on a build that isn't optimised and stuff, otherwise these would be getting absolutely destroyed right now. So yeah, ignore that. But either way, it's an awesome new weapon and an exciting one to come out into the game. And that brings us to the next point as well, since you know, since I'm in the area. This is a new location which is getting added into the game called the Metal Dome and it's right here just north of where Fort Atlas is right there. This is meant to be a new event that's also coming into the game. Um, something to do with the Brotherhood. I did a whole video on it if you want to go check that out. I'll link it somewhere in this video or something like that and you guys can go and check it out. But quick brief thing, basically you come here and these things spawn robots in them and you've got to defend certain people against it. And yeah, like I say, if you want to know more on that, check out the video. But this is the cool new location. A bad thing about this location though is, which is another point, and that is we're going to be losing the location where people can put down their camps or possibly lose the location. It's not completely guaranteed yet because as you can actually see, if I switch out to here, and look, you can't build all the way up here where you used to be able to build, but once you get so far away from the metal dome... Hold on a minute. Did they change this again? Oh no, there you go. So you can get your camp here, which is right below it, but like I said in the video where I did uh, announce in this, we're not sure if this is going to be exactly the same when the game gets released, uh, when the update gets released, but for the moment in the PPS, as you can see, you can still build here. However, if you see a place your camp down here and it's right there, your camp's probably going to get destroyed. So be very careful and it's completely up to you really if you want to risk that. Now along with that location, we're also going to be possibly losing it this way. We will be losing this location, which is down, uh, where am I? There I am. Uh, Harper's Ferry right here on the bridge. Basically you used to be able to build like a bunker style building here, but as you can see over here, there is a new entrance which leads you to the Harbour's Ferry Tunnel. Now for this reason, this bit is not going to be able to be buildable. As you can see, you cannot place your camp here. You used to be able to place it just... Alright, Mothman, settle down. I'm trying to record a bloody video, lad. Two minutes, guys. Right, there you go, Jesus. Right. Now that thing's bloody dead. Where was I? Right, yeah, basically. Right, we were up here, weren't we? So you can't place your camp here at all, basically. Uh, you can get it just up here, which literally gives you the barrier just there, which I don't understand if there would, like... This is the thing that makes me feel like these aren't permanently in place. Like, I feel like when the update comes out, this is going to be pushed back maybe to the bridge, because technically, if you wanted to be a griefer, you could literally place your camp here, block up the entrance there, and stop people from doing the Steel Rain quest line. So that's why I feel like it's going to change. And yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see till July the 7th when the update comes out. One big change that I'm particularly looking forward to is finally going to be able to sell and drop these floater flame of grenades. Well, obviously you can drop them, but you're going to be able to sell them to vendors and stuff and give them to players as well. Whereas at the moment, let's say if we wanted to drop it, it literally cannot be dropped. It just destroys it. So looking forward to that one. Nice little kind of simple change, but you know why it wasn't here in the first place. I am not a clue, but yeah. 
Never mind. There's also a new, wait, the legendary vendor, so, wait, not legendary vendor, but basically a gold bullion vendor where, wait, this one's called Minerva, and it can spawn over at the Creator Foundation and also for Atlas, giving you discounts on gold bullion and I believe daily ops uh, rewards as well. Let me double check all of that and go over what we, wait, what they've said. So here on Bethesda's website, this is what they say in the PTS update log. New vendor, Minerva, a Blue Ridge caravan merchant named Minerva just arrived in Appalachia and she's ready to trade a selection of coveted items in and uh, coveted item plans in exchange for your gold bullion. The items that Minerva has available will rotate regularly, so be sure to check in with her whenever she's in town. Her wares include gold bullion plans that are normally only available from other gold bullion vendors or by completing daily ops. Minerva is no slouch though when it comes to making sales and she wants your business so she's offering discounts on gold bullion plans so that you'll buy from her directly. So she's going to be selling them cheaper than everyone else so definitely worth checking out if you're missing some plans or just want to see what she has available realistically. Minerva's visits will last for a few days at a time, but she will return to Appalachia each week to strike up new deals with any dwellers who want to buy her camp. Please note, starting May 17th in the PTS, uh, it'll be Monday to Wednesday, blah -de blah we don't need to know that. But yeah, new vendor called Minerva. And while we're on this, this takes us to our next point. So also in this update, we are getting a new change to currencies. And in the currency change, caps limit is getting increased from 30,000 up to 40,000. As well as this, gold bullion is getting changed from 200 a day to 400 a day. And also the actual gold bullion budget type of thing, like the cap where you can have up to 5,000, that's getting changed to 10,000. Why there's a limit, I'm not sure, but there's a limit. Also in this, there's also going to be the script where your daily vendor cap has been increased from 150 to 300 and the total budget for this has been increased from 1000 to 5000. Very nice indeed. Going on to the next point as well, we have legendary weapon attribute changes. So you will probably have seen this dot around somewhere. This has been a big kind of news update for a lot of reasons. And here are some of the changes that are being made to legendary effect. So assassins is getting increased from a 10% bonus to humans to a plus 50% damage bonus, which is huge for the PVP community. And it is also a giant bloody bonus, that is from 10% to 50% insane. Now, Berserkers also has removed the damage debuff when damage resistance is 80 or higher. The damage buff when damage resistance is between 1 and 60 has been slightly reduced. And now, if you're like me and you've just listened to me say that, you probably haven't got a clue what that means because neither do I. Never mind. <laughs> Exterminators has been increased as well from 30% to 50%. Still completely useless and scrap weapons. Eh, uh, script weapons even. Ghoul Slayers has been increased from 30 to 50%. I had a Ghoul Slayers explosive handmade once, and that was a lot of fun, especially when you farm in places like White Springs, so not the worst, I suppose. Hunters has also been increased from 30 to 50. Mutants has been increased from plus 5% per um, actual mutation, rather than just a standard, I think, plus 5%, which it was. Now it's plus 5% per mutation, up to a maximum of 25%, making mutants' weapons a lot more powerful. Also on top of this, we've got Mutant Slayers, which increases the damage to suit mutants from 30 to 50. Nocturnal has been, uh, had, well, had its daytime debuff removed, and nighttime damage buff has been increased, which is a really, really big thing, because obviously before you could only use these for half of your game time, whereas now you can use these all the time, and you get an even bigger bonus, although they don't say what bonus it gets, but it says their nighttime damage buff has been increased. Whatever that means, whatever number they've come up with, I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. Then going on, suppressors damage reduction applied to the target has been buffed from 20% for 3 seconds to 25% for 5 seconds. Troubleshooters has also been increased, which is really good, especially if you enjoy running silos, and that's gone from 30 to 50, and also it's really good as well for the daily ops, so happy about that. Zealots has also been increased from 30 to 50 as well, so there's another awesome thing coming into the game. 
Now, on top of that, we also have some new legendary armor and power armor attributes that have been added into the game. And these are all of these ones listed here. So we've got Aristocrats, which has been added in, which is energy and damage resistance increase as your caps increase, up to a maximum of plus 20 damage for each resistance, uh, or may not damage, plus 20 resistance for each um, resistance at 29,000 caps. Sorry, I can't read. Power armor maximum of plus 35 for each resistance when you have over 29,000 caps and heavy, hang on, what? Aristocrats, which increases that the more caps you have. And on power armor, I don't know, they've done this terribly, but power armor you get plus five, plus 35 on each resistance when you've got 29,000 caps. We'll ignore these ones right here, the heavyweight one, because they haven't decided in the bit I'm looking at right now. I will double check to see if they finalized it. But there's also overeaters, which increases your damage reduction up to 6% as you fill your hunger and first meters. There's also a couple of ones here, which is glutens, which hunger and first grows 10% slower. This affects stacks to a maximum of 50%. Complete waste of time. Fireproof has also been added as a two-star legendary effect, which is pretty fantastic to be fair considering that is like a perk maybe that'll save us using the perk if we have it on our armor and um, hardy is another one received 10 percent less damage from explosives which is basically the fireproof perk and also warming which is plus 25 percent cryo resistance good for daily ops to be fair then three star legendary attributes we've got doctors stim packs radaways and radex are five percent more effective Burning, which is a 5% chance to deal 100 fire damage to melee attackers. Electrified, which is 5% chance to deal 100 energy damage to a melee attacker. Frozen, which is the same but cryo damage. And Toxic, which is the same but poison. And there's another one called Dissipating, which slowly regenerates radiation damage when you're out of combat. Now, some of these are also effective on legendary weapon weapons, as you can see here, which is the aristocrats damage increases as caps increase. So you get plus a maximum of plus 50% damage when you're at 29,000 caps, which is a huge bonus. We've also got juggernauts, which is damage increases as health increases. So it's like the opposite of bloodied, which is insane or it seems insane like imagine a, a stealth juggernaut build like that would be mad um heavyweight this attribute is still a work in progress we'll ignore heavyweight again gormans which is damage increases as you fill your hunger in first meters so the, the more you're full in non-thirsty or hydrated i should say that's that makes sense the more damage you do there's also a couple here which is a two star last shot the final round in a magazine has a 25% chance to deal twice the amount of damage. Um, single shots like black powder rifle cannot spawn with last shot. Shit. I had an accident there, so you know I accidentally pressed back on my mouse. So we're gonna try and carry on where we were. Um, steady, you get a plus 25% damage while standing still. Inertial, which replenishes 15 action points with each kill that you make. And then on three star legendary attributes, a new one's been added called Ghost, which means attack that hits enemies each have a 10% chance to generate a stealth field. Not really something I'm not bothered by, but we'll ignore it. There's also in last week's Inside the Vault, they also give us a little bit of an updated thing here. Some of them are the ones we've just read out, although there is one like the Enhanced Vats has been updated. I didn't see this in the um list that we just read through and this has increased the vats hit chance from plus 33 to plus 50 percent so a pretty nice one there and i think the rest we've just all read through just a minute ago so nothing crazy involved in them ones okay another huge uh, thing that has been added into the game is legendary weapon modding now as you can see here i've just crafted a standard war glaive just to show how this works and you go on to modern, uh, modifying it, and there's a new legendary mod added in here, as you can see. And Jesus Christ, I haven't played on this account in a while. Look how many legendary cores and modules they've given me. Bloody hell. Right, so what you can do now is you can go, if you want to craft a one star, a two star, a three star, you select it. Obviously, don't waste your time. Excuse me. On these two here, just go three star, and literally all you got to do is do that. 
And you get this cool animation on screen that they've added in as well. So we've got a Junkies Warglaive with limb damage and reduced weight. And now if you want to do it, because I did fix it as well since I did a video on this, now it doesn't kick you off the workbench every time. So you can just keep doing this. There, so we've got a Juggernaut Warglaive now. And this thing is just, I love it. I love this animation on the left hand side of the screen. And you can do this with like pretty much any weapon. So like if we go back and switch to switch to craft and we go, I don't know, let's, what can I craft on here? What plans has this account got? Um, machine guns, can we go to fixer? And um, just to prove it, did I go past the fixer? Oh, has it not got the fixer? Oh, no, fixer, right? So let's go fixer level 50, craft one of them. And then all we want to do is switch to modify Go to the legendary fixer and literally, there you go, get crafting away. We've just made a nocturnal VATS critical hits do 50% damage and 15% faster reload fixer. Just like that, like boom. You want to change it, you do it again. Now we've just got a vampire's damage while aiming and faster movement speed while aiming. And it's literally as easy as that. Like, look, you just keep pressing it over and over again. We just got, what's that? An aristocrat's damage while aiming VATS critical meter fills faster. Like, it's literally so easy to do, so fast, and it's going to be awesome having this feature in the game, I think. Now then, so, if I switch over to modify, this is another awesome feature that's been added in, and this is legendary power armor. Something we have wanted in the game for so long, and look, it's just as easy as the um, one that we've just done on the weapons, and it's literally, look, Bolstering, boom, just like that. We've got a bolstering piece. We go down to the left leg. We switch over to legendary mod. Boom, do it again. We've got a vanguard. Yes, they don't go together, but that's not the point. The point is, I'm showing you how easy it is to do this. Like, look at that. Boom, another one. Mutant slayers. And it's just something that we've wanted for so long. You can't get unyielding, though. They did remove unyielding, so you can't have unyielding power armor. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm not going to complain about that anymore because I don't really care. It, it would have been nice, but it, it is what it is and it's not worth sweating over it or getting upset over. So, yeah, that's what it is. But, yeah, nice and easy. Lots of stuff to look forward to coming up in the next update of Fallout 76 coming July the 7th. I hope you're all excited. I am. And, yeah, another little note, actually, before we quickly end is when you actually go onto the scoreboard, so I don't know if you can actually, how you view it, or if you've got to wait, um, but basically you've got all the tiers of the scoreboard, goes all the way around, and you complete it at level 100 right here, and then once you actually complete level 100, it keeps on going this time. So for the first time ever, you're not limited to 100 levels in the scoreboard. So after it goes past this point, you're meant to be able to unlock stuff like consumables, they even said atoms, which is absolutely insane. I don't know how often you'd earn atoms, but it is an amazing thing that they're actually adding atoms. Like this brings back the days and how long have we all been asking for, like when you complete it at level 100, we've been saying for God knows how long, please give us like daily challenges rewarding atoms like the old days, because it just, it was horrendous when you completed it. Like there's no reason to play anymore when you got a rank 100. So now there is, there is still a reason to play it and it's going to keep us all entertained for a long time. So there you go, guys. There's a bunch of stuff. I don't know how many points I just came up with added in. I will have missed some. I will have like not included all of the awesome stuff coming in this update. But it's just basically to give you an idea of some of the stuff that's coming in with this update. Because there is loads of stuff and it is awesome. And obviously, don't forget, the new Steel Brain DLC is coming in this update as well. So a new storyline to enjoy, a new scoreboard. Lots of new features, new weapons coming in. Hopefully when Meat Week comes about next month, I think it is when it comes in. Loads of stuff to come in. So hope you guys enjoy. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button for me. And of course, guys, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you later. Bye bye. Big, big, big.